Fall in black and white. Fall in color. Could that be two different men? <laughs> My name is Jack Allen Willard. This is the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. Our video did Paul McCartney die 56 years ago. And did Ringo verify it? I had no plans to do a video on this, but um, I found myself watching on Tubi. I love Tubi. Um, the uh, Joe Gilbert documentary, which was originally uh, released on Netflix, and now it's for free on Tubi. Uh, he produced and directed this documentary. Some have later dubbed it a mockumentary, much like uh, a uh, film done about Elvis Presley being discovered in the suburbs. I'm going to do a future video on that in early 2023. I never know what time you're watching this. You could be watching this in 2024, but um, we will do that. Um, but I was motivated, and when I'm motivated to do something, I just have to do it. I may go a spell and not do anything, but then all of a sudden I know i got to get into the studio, even if, full disclosure, it's Christmas Day 2022 as I do this, Miss LaRue. It is. I'm going to do a separate little Christmas uh, greeting, which will stay up for a short time, so you won't probably be able to find it if you're watching, you know, in the summertime. But I will do that. Uh, say hello to everybody. But this video um, is all about, well, principally Paul McCartney and uh, George Harrison, uh, William Campbell. Is William Campbell and Billy Shears the same person? Is it William Shears Campbell? <laughs> what a funny middle name, huh? <laughs> funny middle name. I mean, they say that John Wayne's uh, middle name was Marilyn. Um, or that that may have even been his first name. <laughs> but you can understand why <laughs> he became John Wayne, right? Um, Joel Gilbert, uh, produced and directed Paul McCartney really is dead. The last Testament of George Harrison. I, uh, I'm not going to copy his work here, although I have to give you a brief outline, whet your appetite to watch it on Doobie. I found it thoroughly entertaining, interesting in, in every way. And it's worth your time, I think. Maybe even on a Christmas evening, you'd want to check this out if you never have uh, before. It's been out for a while. Joel is a very interesting man uh, in and of himself. Um, he uh, has done a lot of uh, uh, videos on Dylan. Uh, is a huge Dylan fan. He kind of looks like Dylan. And you see him in the opening of the movie, uh, Paul McCartney really is dead. You see him doing a, what you could call a disclaimer. Um, and um, uh, he sort of looks like Dylan. You know, it's not like you're going to see a, a Dylan tribute show and a guy like Danny DeVito comes out and he's he's going to be Dylan. You know, that's even if, if Danny DeVito were able to sound exactly like Dylan, it would still be a letdown because we love Danny DeVito as you know, the guy uh, from all those great movies and the Jersey Mike's commercial these days. <laughs> anyway, uh, I would love to see that, uh, Joel. I would love to see you do Dylan if you're still doing it. And uh, so he's he's uh, been taken seriously is what I'm saying. Now, the documentary, uh, as it was called in the beginning, and is labeled that uh, on uh, Tubi, on the, de the description, in the description, uh, has been called a mockumentary. And as I say, uh, one was done, I think, in 2011, uh, dealing with Elvis Presley, uh, uh, and they call that a mockumentary. 
uh, and we will do a video on that. Interestingly enough, you know, um, full disclosure, Joel has been known as a conspiracy theorist and uh, actually has a, a video on Elvis. Uh, for those of you that may not know that we're uh, lured to this because you're a McCartney fan like I am, um, I am kind of the guy, the storyteller for the Bob Joyce uh, Elvis evidence uh, uh, story. Um, I've gotten over 150,000 views and well over 1,000 subscribers talking about uh, the possibility that Bob Joyce, the pastor of Household of Faith in Benton, Arkansas, may be Elvis Presley. And uh, we're going to do uh, a little bit more on Bob in an update and talk about some uh, recent music that he released. Uh, but uh, uh, Elvis Found Alive, I believe, is Joel Gilbert. And we're going to uh, review that in a uh, future uh, video here at the Virtual Church of the Disillusion. So it's very important that you subscribe and like. So we got some really cool stuff coming up uh, in uh 2023 and maybe even as i do this the end of 2022 uh tell your friends put it on your facebook page if you like it you know uh, let me know because they always love to know these things and let me know where you're watching the video from in the comment section my personal email is jack the fair guy f-a-i-r jack the fair guy at gmail.com all right but uh, yeah, uh, Elvis Found Alive is also in the Joel Gilbert catalog, and there's so many, many, many uh, Bob Joyce Elvis videos. But I, I think what I do that I haven't seen someone else do in the way I do it uh, is I lay out the story. I lay out the coincidences, coincidences he said. 21 coincidences why Bob Joyce may be Elvis. Check out that video. It's growing again. It's growing again. Um, but this uh, movie I just stumbled on uh, last night, Christmas Eve, and uh, I uh, was captivated. Some people say, oh, it's boring. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, filled with error. Now, the filled with error part, um, uh, we first have to tell you, lay out, uh, at least this much that, uh, uh, as Joel explains in the beginning of his movie, his documentary, uh, these tapes from George Harrison came in the mail. No, there was no return address, although uh, George Harrison, of course, his name was written on the, uh, uh, micro cassette uh, tapes, and they even sent a player along to play them. <laughs> Very convenient. They sent a player uh, along, and uh, supposedly this was done not too long after George was uh, stabbed in his uh, his castle. Uh, a deranged fan broke through all security and was able to. Uh, uh, stabbed George several times, and he was in the hospital recovering, and he had suspicions, according to uh, what we are led to believe here, that this may have been a planned attack by a certain agency, and uh, uh, he wanted to get some uh, stuff uh, out, some information out, and he wanted to tell his story in case anything should happen to him, you know. You know, they didn't uh, make it the first time, they weren't successful in killing him the first time, but what if they were going to try again? And uh, so he recorded these uh, cassettes, or cassettes, as they say in Britain. And um, now the first thing uh, people comment on is it doesn't sound that much like George. I would say sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes his uh, overly British uh, pronunciations you know, uh, sound like uh, they are contrived. But um, there are times when it sort of does sound like Harrison. Does it sound like a Harrison in his 50s? Eh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, but certainly well worth uh, your uh, viewing uh, for entertainment purposes, of, uh, if nothing else. I don't think it um, hurts the reputation, damages the reputation of either Harrison or the living Paul McCartney. Um, 
but uh, they certainly uh, they certainly cover a lot of bases in this movie. Paul McCartney really is dead. Um, basically, the gist, the outline that you'll be looking for uh, is the uh, George claims that the British intelligence agency reported the death of Paul McCartney, uh, also known as MIS. Uh, and informed John, Ringo, and uh, George of what appeared to be Paul's death on November 9th, 1966, um, about 6 o'clock in the morning or so. What the story is there is that they were in the studio in Abbey Road uh, late at night, and they were working on songs for Sgt. Pepper's. And uh, there was a strong disagreement between Lennon and uh, McCartney. Um, John was getting to the point, and we we know he certainly was at the point by the time he met Yoko, where he wanted to do more than pop love songs. He wanted, uh, very influenced at the time by Bob Dylan, who wouldn't be, He's one of the greatest uh, poets of our, our, our uh, lifetime. And uh, they, he wanted to, uh, he, they work on a particular song. And uh, John uh, wanted to make it more meaningful, more Dylanish. And uh, uh, McCartney was saying, we do pop songs. We're a pop band. You know, they hadn't gotten into the heavy stuff yet, really. Uh, but now it was time. Lennon felt it was seriously time uh, uh, for them to do that. And by the time Yoko came along and started uh, talking in John's ear, uh, you know, that was her message. You know, I mean, the the world's exploding around us and you're singing, I want to hold your hand. Well, Lennon supposedly said that that's a great song. And it is. It's a great pop song. Um, uh and what he was trying to convey to Yoko was don't diminish great songs because you feel that we should be saying something more. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too. We did that. And now, yes, I'm going to uh, go into, uh, and, I, and I already have uh, gone into areas of a, a more serious topic commentary uh, in the age that, that was the uh, 60s and 70s. Um, so... Um, they were, uh, supposedly, uh, told about, uh, an accident, uh, in the car that they believe Paul McCartney was driving and they needed the, uh, the Beatles to come to the scene and verify that it was Paul. It was a gruesome accident, uh, that happened, uh, uh, now the, just, I should say this, um, uh, and none of this spoils the movie for you because there's so much more information in it. But uh, they had they had a row, you know. John and Paul had a row, and Paul left about five o'clock in the morning, very unhappy. Uh, uh, he he left hastily, and it was pouring rain out. And uh, so up the road he uh, goes towards his home, and. Uh, uh, the accident that happened was uh, was a really bad one, and uh, in the accident, uh, uh, McCartney was decapitated. So that and that's that story has been out there, uh, and of course, uh, in, uh, in we know the lyric. We all know the lyric. He blew his mind out in a car. Were they talking about one of the lords of Windsor who had passed away around that time, died in a terrible car accident, or were they talking about Paul McCartney? So that's always been on the table for those who uh, pay attention to this. So they talk, and you'll all, you'll want to see that part where they arrive uh, to identify uh, the uh, body, which has been zipped up. And uh, there's a woman crying by the railing. Um, now, some reports say that she was the a meter maid, and Paul was uh, probably distracted by her, a very pretty meter maid. Uh, but what would she be doing out there at that time of the morning? That makes no sense at all, um, that she was actually doing the job of a meter maid. Uh, but... Uh, 
that her name was Rita, and uh, uh, Paul stopped the car and asked her if she wanted a ride. And according to the movie, um, she was excited and thrilled and became affectionate as he was driving. <laughs> okay, so watch that part. It's uh, really, it's uh, really, really good. Now, the man who led the uh, MIS was an imposing brute named Maxwell. <laughs> Maxwell, and uh, he seems to be referred to in more songs than uh, than the one you may think of right away. In fact, in Maxwell's Silver Hammer from Abbey Road, there's not really a, a, it, it's a song about a female, uh, but uh, the name Maxwell may have inspired the man they knew from the MIS, known as Maxwell, who gave them a whole lot of trouble. The theory was, and this has been said before, uh, and it's been said about Elvis Presley too, and uh, yes, um, uh, there there are some tie-ins here. There are some things that made me uh, think of what I've done with my uh, work uh, on uh, the Bob Joyce uh, Elvis factor. Um, uh, but... Uh, uh, the idea that was, uh, that was, uh, told is, is that, uh, um, Maxwell said that we can't have this story get out. Uh, it will cause a national frenzy. Girls will commit suicide all over the world that they find out that Paul was killed in a car accident. We can't have this. It's not good for the queen. It's not good for anybody. Uh, and, and he listed a, a bunch of reasons, you, and you'll see some of them in the movie as to why they can't do that, okay? And um, um, they uh, they knew they had a problem <laughs> if, uh, if uh, McCartney is is dead in, uh, and in a body bag, how can you proceed on? First of all, they had to decide whether they wanted to proceed on, and uh, the meeting, uh, and this is all just possibilities um, from what is now referred to as a mockumentary. You have to, uh, you have to look at this yourself. Uh, and make your own decision. It's the same when we do uh, the Bob Joyce Elvis material. But I have to say I was reluctant to do this because of the fact that I uh, 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 I am diminishing the Bob Joyce story by talking about something that is probably not true, that I am certainly not saying is true, that Paul McCartney died on November 9th, 1966. 1966. But I got some material here. I got some material outside of the uh, documentary. So don't you go anywhere. Pause it if you have to. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. Uh, please be fair. <laughs> All right. Um, but there's some stuff coming that um, that uh, is very, very interesting. Anyway, this guy Maxwell, uh, you know, uh, uh, got the Beatles to understand uh, now, there actually was a Paul McCartney look-alike contest that Dick Clark made happen, that Dick Clark produced, and the winner, I believe, was William Campbell. William Campbell. Is it William Shears Campbell? Is it really Billy Shears? William Campbell won the contest. I think I've seen the photo. I don't have that photo with me. I do have images. I do have images. Um, but... It looks like a weak chin Paul McCartney kind of thing. Um, uh, if that's an accurate uh, photo of the winner of the Paul uh, McCartney lookalike contest. But uh, he, he had some differences. Um, what we learn is that uh, um, they uh, scooped William up and uh, uh, plastic surgery would happen. Numerous plastic surgeries, like uh, five of them total. And uh, you'll see all that in the Joel Gilbert film, all right? Um, but uh, Rita, lovely Rita, <laughs> 
was the woman that was supposedly in the car. Uh, she did need some treatment. She did need to go to the hospital. But you would think in a wreck, uh, they, they show uh, a picture that could be the car. It's probably another car. Um, uh, she would have needed some serious treatment. You know, she probably would have already been at the hospital by then. Um, one of the things that people have seen this uh, movie say, besides that they don't think it's a good, uh, authentic imitation even of George Harrison, um, I would disagree and say it's in the realm. Now, what uh, Joel says at the beginning of the film is they tried with three different agencies to authenticate the voice, and each of the three reports was inconclusive. Inconclusive, all right? So, uh, and they waited like five years to put it out. I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Um, but they finally, uh, they finally did. And, um, um, as I say, they, 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 uh, were saying that, uh, there were many reasons that it would be tragic if it was announced that Paul, uh, died. So enter, enter the winner of the Paul, uh, lookalike contest, uh, William Campbell, the Beatles announced at this point that they would stop touring. They needed a lot of time here. They needed, we're just going to work on studio albums right now. And so in, during that time, uh, uh, William is going to begin having surgeries to look more like Paul McCartney. And of course, he's going to have scars and things like that for a while. So we're going to pull him off. Uh, Lennon was uh, quoted as saying uh, uh, in this uh, documentary, uh, they attribute this uh, quote to him that he had more than 50 songs that they hadn't even gotten to that he wrote with Paul McCartney. So there were plenty of songs to keep them going because uh, this new William Campbell was, uh, you know, yes, he was a musician, but he was not left-handed. He played bass, but with his right hand. They had to try to fix that. You know, they tried to try to fix that. But they wouldn't be doing live shows, so you wouldn't really be seeing it, you know. They would be in the studio. They would be in the studio, and I would assume that someone else was playing bass on those albums, if you believe this. And I'm certainly not saying I do, but it's a heck of a yarn. It's a heck of a tale uh, anyway. And, um, so, uh, they went about doing that. They went about, uh, doing that. Um, there was tremendous grief between the remaining Beatles, uh, and, uh, kind of a resentment for, uh, William Campbell. Uh, they called him, uh, fall. Um, and, uh, in the, picture that I showed you in the beginning of the video, um, the black and white picture, Paul McCartney, pre-1966, and uh, fall, fall, the imitation after that. And um, I looked at other pictures of the after-1966 Paul. And I looked at some early pictures of Paul McCartney, and <laughs> you could say there was a change. You could say there was a, a change. Um, now, the people who point out that uh, George's uh, voice doesn't sound uh, to be authentic also point out that there's a myriad of uh, of uh, of getting the facts wrong. The chronological facts wrong. For example, uh, they start talking about Lennon led the charge to put a bunch of uh, clues in uh, on the album covers and in on the back and uh, inside the uh, album, you know. Oh, one thing we miss so much in 2022 is the wonderful artwork, the, the, the work that went into album covers, you know. Now you don't even get a CD cover. You're downloading it off Spotify or what have you, you know. Um, so um, something is, has really been missed. Vinyl has made somewhat of a comeback, and they still do 
Uh, many artists still do that, but uh, it doesn't get the attention in the audience uh, that uh, that it got back in the 70s and 80s. You know, we, we've lost so much, including, I would say, we've lost a lot of great music and uh, it's been substituted with a lot of uh, crap. But that's me, you know. I'm 66. What do you, what do you want from me? Uh, they, they will point out that Rubber Soul was released a full year uh, before the death of Paul McCartney in 66. And um, um, so there, there's no way there could be clues on the Rubber Soul album as George Harrison, or the man who is claiming to be George Harrison, says in this uh, lengthly, there were two micro cassettes uh he talks about clues on the rubber soul album which would be impossible because it, it would be 1965 1965 um i have so many notes here and we're rushing to do this um i do want to say that the way that joel ties in lovely rita meter made lovely Rita meter made to uh, Heather Mills at the end of the film is worth watching just for that, <laughs> just for that. And the tie in that he does to uh, Linda McCartney, who uh, allegedly was a uh, photographer of the Beatles pre 66 and on. And she had a lot of information there is, uh, there is tape of Heather Mills saying if she don't get what she wants in this divorce settlement, I know a lot of damaging stuff, and they know that. So, uh, you know, basically she was saying, saying uh, d d don't screw with me. Don't screw with me. You know what, you know what I know. And um, <laughs> I'll let you see the rest. I won't, I'm not going to give away any more of that. But um, very, very... Uh, uh, captivating. I found, I found it, uh, very, very captivating. So, um, Hey, could this be true? And did Ringo Starr verify it in the Hollywood inquire in 2015? Um, <laughs> gotta go I didn't have time to even think about getting my Google photos, and I did not keep my promise to become more tech savvy in uh, in 2022. Maybe maybe 2023 will be better, but that appeared supposedly in the Hollywood Inquirer. Um, former Beatle. Ringo Starr claims the real Paul McCartney died in 1966 and was replaced by a look-alike. Look Beverly Hills, the former drummer of the Beatles, Ringo Starr, surprised the world this morning during an interview in his luxurious California residence when he admitted that the 45-year-old rumors remember this is 2015, about the alleged death of Paul McCartney in 1966 were actually true. You can find this online for yourself. And um, a week later, a week later, um, Paul McCartney, uh, supposedly in the same <laughs> paper, had a response to that had a response to that. Paul McCartney refutes Ringo Starr's allegations that he died in 1966. Um, Paul, McCartney, Paul McCartney finally reacted this morning to the conversational declaration made last Wednesday by his former bandmate Ringo Starr during an interview with the Hollywood Inquirer. And... Um, he was uh, less than kind to Ringo. I want to see if I can pull that part up for you. Um, trying to um, get a certain...
Okay. Here's McCartney. Supposedly taken around the time he uh, refuted what Ringo Starr had said. Uh, and he says here, I'm going to put on my reading glasses that really work, which are the dollar and a quarter magnifiers. <laughs> I know that Ringo is growing senile and losing his mind, says Sir Paul, but he doesn't need to invent such idiotic stories to attract attention. He probably heard that Wings was about to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he felt jealous. He felt jealous. I've seen Ringo do and say many stupid things in my life, but this is one of the worst. If he so badly is in need of uh, media coverage, he could just invent crap about himself without implicating me in his delirium, he added with spite. <laughs> that doesn't sound at all uh, accurate because um, um, they have done projects after uh, 2015 together. They have been on stage together. And uh, um, when you're an ex-Beatle, you're famous forever. You know, there's only two remaining Beatles, of course. And um, uh, uh, you're not going to have hits on the pop charts forever. Paul McCartney hasn't had a hit uh, that did very much on the uh, pop charts for decades. Uh, but he has an incredible catalog of music. And, uh, of course, anytime he goes out to perform his songs, uh, it's a packed hall. It's a packed hall. I think that would be true for a long time if Sir Paul uh, had a, a lot more years than he probably has left. Uh, because um, uh, it's not just people my age that love the Beatles. It's uh, people much younger, people that have seen the the uh, the Broadway show, that have seen the groups uh, like... Uh, um, Beatlemania now, I saw, uh, you know, there's just a love for the music that transcends my generation. It, it, it also uh, trickles down to uh, much uh, earlier generations. So I don't think he would refer, uh, refer to uh, Ringo as senile. Anyway, was there a, is there a Hollywood Inquirer? Uh, they say it never existed. My research uh, shows me that it may have existed at a time before <laughs> movies were would be, you know, they would have missed the boat because uh, they they may have become defunct in 1914. <laughs> so there wasn't much to talk about then, really. You know, the golden age of Hollywood had not really begun at it, and uh, so uh, so uh, the idea that. Uh, these uh, interviews, these uh, shocking claims were made in the Hollywood Inquirer doesn't uh, uh, pass the smell test because there was no Hollywood Inquirer. And just like I say in my Bob Joyce Elvis videos, if you think that Bob Joyce is going to admit to some guy who calls himself Spa Guy, and I'm not, uh, you know, hey, Spa Guy, you know, you uh, have fine editing skills and you do some uh Good work. So, but he's never going to. Bob Joyce is never going to confess uh, to you uh, in, in the way that you want him to. And then uh, uh, you caught him off guard. He did uh, a denial, and then appeared to feel guilty that he said, "No, no, I'm not." Because he, spa guy, said, "You're not Elvis, right?" Uh, and then he seemingly, we couldn't see his face, reluctantly said, "No, no, no, I'm not." Uh, and, uh, then seemed he had to justify what he just said, saying that the Lord gave me dreams to reach the world. That's in our Elvis videos. Uh, check them out here. Reasons why Bob Joyce may or may not be Elvis. Check that video out as, uh, well. So th there's also claims about this guy, Maxwell, <laughs> that, uh, uh, he got, 
win pretty quickly that John was putting in a bunch of uh, clues on the album covers. Uh, and uh, he became enraged and approached the Beatles and actually uh, hauled them in for questioning where he physically assaulted them. <laughs> that sounds pretty weird. Now, I would think the Beatles by then would have bodyguards with them at all the time, but I can't, I don't know that to to be true but i think they would of course when it's the law the bodyguards have to kind of stand down you know they have to stand down um but uh, there's so much about this maxwell guy calling the beatles you 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 blanking wankers i knew i couldn't trust you and you're putting clues all over the place and uh, they go through in this movie joel gilbert's movie they go through the various clues and they're compelling on the albums uh in fact uh um, in 2011, 2011, Paul McCartney would finally admit that um, this was uh, not by accident, not by accident, but it was a uh, hoax that the Beatles uh, came up with with help from Brian Epstein, a way to uh, um, uh gain more fan interest you know there's nothing like a good uh conspiracy to uh to uh make your audience larger uh that's why i come on here and say that uh, i only speak of possibilities i'm certainly not saying that paul mccartney died in 1966 by the way <laughs> this morning there was a movie on when I came into the living room, uh, the March of the Wooden Soldiers. Is that little Bo Peep in there? Who doesn't look that little, but she's uh, she's sitting and talking to the actor. And I swear to you, watch March of the Wooden Soldiers. The guy does look like Paul McCartney, but that would happen on this day. Must mean that I'm supposed to come into the studio on Christmas Day and uh, do this movie do this uh, uh, movie. Um, so uh, where are what I'm looking for? Where is what I'm looking for? Um, yes, Brian uh, Spitzer from Beetle.net uh, did an interview with Paul. You can find that. Paul admitted in 2011 that it was uh, a hoax to uh, the the uh, Paul being dead was a hoax that was somewhat invented by uh, Brian Epstein, the then manager of the of the Beatles. Yes, the question was posed: Why didn't the CIA cover up Elvis's death to avoid fan suicide? My answer would be: What makes you think they didn't? <laughs> what makes you think they didn't? Oh, but we tell that in the, the Bob Joyce Elvis uh, videos. But um, uh, there's one more thing here. Um, let me see here. I don't want to leave stuff out. Um, we talked about uh, um, Billy Shears or William Campbell may not be the same person. William Campbell won the Paul McCartney lookalike contest that he played bass with his right hand, Paul played with his left, so he had to learn to play with his left in the few times that they would play in public. And uh, he got better and better at being uh, Paul McCartney. The other tie-in, another tie-in anyway, because there's so much in this uh, Joel Gilbert movie, is the death of John Lennon. Um they infer that uh, John was going to spill the beans, maybe from the Dakota, uh, uh, about uh, what he, what was really the case with Paul McCartney. He was going to spill the beans, and uh, they try to infer in the movie that you know uh, that he had been warned if he if he did that, it would lead to his death. And now how do we get Mark David Chapman into that scenario? Let's find some dope who's a, a Lennon fan and say, um, he, we would like you to go and kill John Lennon and spend the rest of your life in jail. But we will make sure your commissary account 
is full to the brim and you'll be able to get all the stuff you need, we'll, we'll, put, uh, we'll put $200 in your commissary account for life every month. <laughs> you know, how does that work? How do you get Mark David Chapman into uh, that scenario? Um, but I think, yeah, I think, you know, we have um, covered, oh, Russ Gibbs, DJ, Russ Gibbs. In uh, 1969, on the 12th of October, got on the air and said that it was true. Paul McCartney uh, had passed away. Paul McCartney had passed away in a car accident in 1966. And uh, he was noticing what it appears. Now, some people might disagree with what I'm going to say here. But it appears that John Lennon was the inventor of the term backward masking where you you uh, you find a way to say something in a song that when you play it back will say something uh, completely different we all heard this during the, the the time i bury paul paul is dead i am dead those kind of things we all heard that they were there and he was starting to play this stuff on the air backwards and uh, got a lot of attention. It got a lot of attention. And the Beatles had to start denying this. They had to start denying this. Uh, in um, the later years of the David Letterman show on CBS, Paul McCartney was uh, a guest. And um, Letterman started talking about the, uh, the uh, rumors that Paul McCartney had uh, faked his uh, death. Um, and uh, Paul, of course, played it off amusingly and uh, uh, said that would mean I'm not Paul McCartney. And uh, it would mean so much else. I mean, um, William Campbell would have to be an incredible talent. Some would say that the... because. Many would say that the after uh, 66 McCartney uh, is when he came into his prime, especially uh, by uh, 1970. And then uh, Paul McCartney as a solo artist and Paul McCartney uh, as a um, as uh, the leader of wings, the leader of wings. There are some great pop songs in uh, the Wings era, Live and Let Die comes to mind. Listen to what the man said. Someone's knocking at the door. Uh, someone's ringing the bell. Open the door and let him in. I would not say that's Paul McCartney being his most brilliant, but it was a hit. It was a hit. My Love, great song. Oh, on and on and on, both as a solo artist and uh, as a uh, uh, uh the leader of wings. And, and of course, Ringo did real well for himself too. Ringo uh, had a string of hits, a string of pop hits is still beloved. Uh, I don't think he's a uh, senile. You tell me a man who's what 80, whatever, and looks like that. <laughs> My goodness. You know, there's a lot to be said for hair dye. <laughs> there's a lot to be said for hair dye, but then people like Dick Van Dyke who are 96, uh, don't use hair dye, and they look fantastic. Some guys look great with white hair. Some guys don't. They look their age real quick. But hair dye can really you know, make you look like you used to look many years ago. It really can. Well, somewhat of a version of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so watch that movie. Uh, I think you will get a kick out of it. There's more tie-ins to things that I haven't referred to, uh, and there's certainly, uh, they go through each album cover, and it's not just a couple of hints. Uh, whether this be a hoax or whether this be the truth, there are dozens and dozens of uh, clues on these album covers and in the backward masking. I found it, uh, I found it quite compelling. So that's our video. Uh, you make up your own mind on that. Watch for our videos on uh, 
Bob Joyce, Elvis Presley here at the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. If you type in the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned, you should get a, a, a list of all my videos, all my videos, and because uh, we talk about a lot of important topics here. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I was labeled that by the Daily Star in the UK when we talked about the fact that George Klein, the Memphis DJ, uh, who was uh, a very good friend of Elvis Presley's, passed away. And, of course, the question was, would Bob Joyce go to the funeral? It appeared that he did. I noted that, and that got me, you know, there are pictures. Priscilla Presley was there. Um, it's a compelling story. And if you go to the 21 Coincidences, why Bob Joyce may be Elvis, you'll see it there. If you have a cheap phone, it won't work because that's a pre-mic where I was using just the camera mic. I don't use the camera mic anymore. So if you have a cheap phone, people say, oh, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. But if you have a, de a decent system, you can pump it up and you'll hear it just fine. And uh, you, you can watch it on YouTube. Just cast it to your t TV or flat screen, you know. Um, so that's that's all that's all I got to say about that, as uh, Forrest Gump uh, would say. I thank you so much for uh, watching. Um, let me know where you are watching from. I'd love to hear your comments. Remember, uh, this is not meant in any way to be dis disrespectful to uh, Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney, who is a legend. I loved him when I was a little kid. In uh, 1964, I had a Beatle button and a Beatle wig, and uh, I have loved him and all four of the Beatles ever since. Thanks for watching, everybody.